you say, when you come to Mike and you're, you're always expecting to win play for championships and you're always expecting you know go to toe to toe with the Chihuahuas and the Kennewicks and the rich of the world that's what you that's what you do when you come here and that's all summer long when we're working out that's what we talk about and you know this isn't, this isn't going to be the only close game we play all year so you know I'm just looking forward to seeing what we can do uh, th throughout the rest of the season. The council is now in session. With a personality shaped by being an athlete and a background in mainstream sports media, I found that the stories I was most interested in telling were the ones often overlooked, the ones that might not otherwise be told, the ones that show the intangible and not just the highlight reel. The Sports Council is about highlighting the great, the good, the unique, and everything in between in the Pacific Northwest sports world. I'm Jamie Council. Thanks for joining me. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, the Tri-Cities leader in sports. Happy Thursday, September 7th, and welcome to the Sports Council. I'm Jamie Council. We're here in our new time slot, new time, same show, 1130, and that will be the time moving forward for the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, your Tri-Cities leader in sports. It's a busy time right now. College football, NFL is back this week tonight chiefs lions and on sunday it's the seahawks and rams at 125 on sunday and that is the reason for the move of the time seattle sports talk covering the seahawks so we want to make sure that you get all the content you care about and hopefully you care about local sports this is the only local sports radio show on the Air, so support local, and that's exactly what we're trying to do here. But covering a couple things first, college football, how about the Pac-12? That is amazing. And also Monday night, Clemson and Duke. Duke getting the 28-7 upset over Clemson. And quarterback Riley Leonard, he had a great game through for almost 200 yards and rushed for almost 100 yards and got a touchdown. So his performance, 175 yards through the air and the touchdown, he thought after the game, you know what? I deserve an extension on my homework assignment that I did not do. And he actually put out a video asking the professor, hey, can I have an extension? And the funny thing is that the professor the next day released his own video saying, I don't care if you're the quarterback. I don't care how good of a game you had. You do not get an extension. Your teammates were able to get to the assignment done. And so can you. Um, I love the response where it is showing no special treatment. And it was a home game. It would be one thing where if you're an athlete, sometimes your schedule really does put a damper on what you can do as a student. And in that case, you go talk to the teacher beforehand. And I love the teacher's response. And I think it sends the message to other people. You know what? I don't care how great of a football player you are. You're still a person and you're still a student. And, you know, as you get to the upper levels, it's more it's more about doing the job. But in amateur sports, in academic based athletics, that is a great thing to learn. And we saw that a lot during the pandemic, talking to John Lobestall, used to be the head coach over at Sunnyside, head coach for Grizzlies football. And he was saying during the pandemic, how many of his student athletes were ineligible and they just didn't care. But as soon as sports came back, all of a sudden they got their grades up. They got it right in the classroom just so they could play football. And, you know, they should care about school, but kids don't always care about school. So athletics sometimes forces people to care about things that they might care about later in life and be better people in the process just to do what they love, which is play sports. So Sunnyside, John Lobestall stepping down and stepping into the head coaching position last year, 
It stayed in the family. Marshall Lobestall, former quarterback at WSU and state champion out of Oak Harbor High School, stepped in as head coach starting last season. In week one, Sunnyside and Prosser have started a great tradition. They are picking back up the rivalry now. Prosser, of course, is 2A. Sunnyside is 4A. But the rivalry is still there. And it was an overtime finish. Prosser getting the win 29-23 in overtime. And it's exciting. A lot of great players on both sides out of Sunnyside. You want to be able to watch him. Noah McNair, he is committed to Air Force wide receiver for Sunnyside. So it's really fun to track players out of the area and see what they do at the next level. So Noah McNair will be joining Cameron Breyer over at Air Force. And that is always fun to see. And out of Prosser, Corey McClure, he took over quarterback role last year. So he is settling in. So a great win in overtime for the Mustangs, 29-23. The nail on the coffin in that one being Gage Thiamond's 13-yard run in overtime. And another game locally going into overtime it was the Kamayak and Chiawana game. So the east side, all eyes are sometimes on the east side because the east side, we have good football over here. You take a look, Royal seems like they win every year and you have state contenders, Kennewick losing in the state, uh, the state championship game in that same year. Kamayakin losing in the state semifinals to Graham Kapowson and of course GK the eventual state champion so the east side has good football and the west side eyes are kind of looking over trying to find that measuring stick because they know that state contenders come from this side of the mountains and this year they are looking at Kamayakin. So Kamayakin in week one getting the 2013 overtime win over Chiawana in that game the finish it was a thriller a tip pass caught by Kyler Rutz so a pass breakup by Chiawana Kyler Rutz was there to pick up the pieces and then Chiawana had a chance to rebuttal but of course they couldn't convert so 2013 the final score in that game and it was the second year in a row that that game went into overtime chiawana getting the upper hand last year at kamayakin's house and this year kamayakin at chiawana's house getting the overtime win after the game i had a chance to catch up with scott biglin and this is what he had to say a very tough win, a very good football team over there at Chia, for Chiawana. I know those guys really well. I grew up with a lot of them. Uh, you know, it's always fun to play those guys, but we know it's always going to be a war. Uh, me, I, I had a horrible, horrible uh, first half of play calling. I put Trent in some terrible positions, and, you know, he had five picks, but those were on me. They, they weren't on him. They were on me. I had bad play calling, and I need to I need to go back and get myself better. I got to figure out a better way to call the plays, and, uh, you know, and we will. We're all going to learn how to get better throughout the year. And talk about the adjustments, the first half to the second half. It was an ugly first half overall, which I think was reflected in the number of interceptions, the number of turnovers by each team. So what adjustments did you make? Uh, we knew we had to try to run the ball more effectively. Um, so we decided to bring two backs in to see what, what they would do to adjust to that. And, uh, you know, we figured we had numbers in the box and, and we did a good job of running the ball. Cam came in and, and gave us a spark. And, and Mac, you know, he's just a, he's a bowling ball out there. He just runs his heart out. I know he's only 5'4", but, man, he's a, he's a hard one to tackle. You know, when a guy squats 400 pounds, he's hard to tackle. So uh, we're, we're kind of hopefully be a multi you know, dimensional team. Teams will watch us and maybe say, hey, we got to defend the run, but we could throw the ball. Trent, Trent's a heck of a thrower, and he's only going to get better as time goes by. You know, this is his first start in, in two years. I, I'm just really proud of the kid for, for coming in and, ha you know, having the guts in that last, you know, drive to get us uh, to score a touchdown and then in the overtime making some big throws. And, uh, you know, I'm very proud of him. And he's I know he's going to look at this game and be disappointed in, in his play, but I'm very proud, and I'm, I'm looking forward to see what he's going to do throughout the rest of the season because he's going to just get better and better. He's, he's a tremendous 
tremendous athlete, tremendous competitor, and I, I, I'm looking forward to working with him more. What's it been like getting him ready to play under the Friday Night Lights? He stepped up tonight. Oh, he's a warrior. I mean, he's all heart. You know, for him to go through what he went through, the rehabs, and uh, you know, two years of just not being able to play a sport he loves, and, and to get back out here and not have the start that he wanted, and then to come back and do what he did, that shows you what kind of competitor he is. I don't care what the numbers say, how many picks he had. You know, that that takes a lot of heart and that takes a lot of uh, gut and grit, and and he has it and. Our team is going to ride off that, and if he can do that, you know, what he did in that second half, we're going to have a pretty successful season. Yeah, and with that being said, um, high expectations put on the Braves heading into this game. You can never count Chiawana out. So what were you kind of saying to your guys to get them ready for this game that – ended in overtime a different outcome tonight though uh, you know you just talk to them you know you you say when you come to Kamaiki and you you're always expect to win play for championships and you always expect to you know go to toe to toe with the Chihuahuas and the Kenwoods and the Richmonds of the world that's what you that's what you do when you come here and that's all summer long when we're working out that's what we talk about and you know this isn't, this isn't going to be the only close game we play all year so you know this is just a, a pre-hype to what we're going to see the rest of the season and you know uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing what we can do uh, th throughout the rest of the season yeah and talk about Carter Poland. It's an interesting position he's put in where Trent went down last year. He stepped in as QB1 and now you had a touchdown that was Trent to Carter. That's pretty special as well as he's kicking PAT. So it takes quite a teammate to step into a different role and shine and um, Carter's really done that. Oh, you know, he's he's made us a better football team because, you know, he, he didn't sulk about it. He didn't cry about it. He just said, where can I play? And we said, we want to play with our receiver. And he said, where? And we said, just like when Peyton Graham was here, we said, you're going to play be everywhere. And so he knows all the positions because he was a quarterback and he's happy to do them all. He's loving playing defense. He's, you know, now our kicker, our punter. He's our Mr. Everything. And he's such a selfless guy, man. He doesn't care about, you know, I, I'm sure he wants to play quarterback, but he, he all, he's all about winning and he wants to make this team go as far as it can possibly go. And if that's playing wide receiver, that's what he'll do. But he'll step in at quarterback like he did today when Trent got, you know, his little uh, cut on his arm where he had to get it stitched up. But, you know, all guts. You know, I, I love both those kids and, you know, they're, uh, they're good friends and they help each other out in practice and they keep pushing each other to get better. Great stuff by Coach Biglin. Always enjoy catching up with him. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break Hear from our sponsors that make this show possible. And when we come back, we're talking three takeaways for Kamiakin. So don't go anywhere. That and much more coming up on the Sports Council. You're listening to 1340 ESPN, your Tri-Cities leader in sports. Welcome back to the Sports Council. I'm Jamie Council. Before the break, we heard from Coach Biglin following their 2013 overtime win over Chiawana. And we're going to talk takeaways, three takeaways from that game. The first one is Kamayakin has room to grow. And a great example of that is in the offense, Trent Woodhouse, a junior Injuries kept him off the field, ACL tear his freshman year, and ACL tear his sophomore year in the Chiawana game last year. So back-to-back -back knee injuries keeping him off the field, and we talked a little bit about that in the Biglin interview, as you heard. And it was a rough one from Trent coming out of the gates. Five interceptions in the first half, one of those interceptions being returned 87 yards for a pick six by Justin Weber a great player so don't want to take anything away from him it was a great play but five interceptions by Trent Woodhouse but then he was able to finish the game with almost 200 yards and a couple touchdowns so one of those being with 111 left to play and the second one, of course, being the tip ball caught by Tyler, by Kyler Rutz, rather, in the end zone in overtime. So to be able to not only get back into shape to lead the team at quarterback and have a questionable first half and then come back and get the job done, that takes a lot of mental toughness. So... Trent Woodhouse, he's only going to get more comfortable from here. And after the win, had a chance to catch up with Trent. And this is what QB1 had to say. Uh, it felt great beating Chiawana. You know, big rivalry. They're pretty good. Um, 
Last year we lost in overtime on a field goal, so it felt pretty good to come to their stadium and beat them in overtime. So it was a hard-fought game. Yeah, and the Chiawana defense definitely gave you a handful. Um, you guys ran a lot more in the second half. So just talk about the adjustments and working through those as you got your first start, well, I guess, first full game in two years. Yeah, uh, their defense is really tough to play against. Um, they bring a lot of pressure. You know, they got good, uh, very good players, cover well. But, yeah, it's just a tough defense to play against. And talk about you mentally, how did you mentally prepare for this game coming back from injury and just working to uh, to get back into the spot that you wanted to be in two years ago? Yeah, so I tore my ACL for a second time last year. I got my first start, but I got out in the second quarter. So faced a lot of adversity, had to come back through that, work really hard, physical therapy, surgery, all that. And, you know, I just had to keep my chin up the whole time. But... Yeah, just, yeah. Talk about the support from your team because obviously they're a big part of that. I've gone through a recon knee reconstruction myself and it's a big mental battle too. So just talk about the support of this team as you're stepping into this role. Yeah, knee surgeries are a big mental battle, but having a team to surround you and sort of, you know, keep you distracted and, you know, all your friends, they'll make you happy and stuff like that, so. Yeah, and talk, uh, uh, talk about your line. Oh man, my line, I love them. I love those big boys up front. They, uh, great protection. They're all super close. I'm, I've been friends with them forever. So, yeah, super great guys. Great linemen too. Great stuff by Woodhouse. And before the interview, he was like, I've never done one of these before. So that's why I tried to try to make it as easy as possible and always appreciate the time. And at high school, that's one thing I love covering about high school sports, too, is you're teaching them how to talk to the media, how to represent themselves and, um, you know, Trent, get used to it. You're going to be interviewed more. Great game. Great second half. Great win. And that takes us to takeaway two. Big Lynn loves his offense. Kamayakin is known for having explosive offenses. Many great quarterbacks Big Lynn is able to create. Henry Mercado breaking the MCC record for touchdowns. I think he had 40 of them. I didn't look up that stat before this, but that's what comes to mind. 40 touchdowns, and Mercado was the quarterback when Kamayakin lost in the state semifinals. And now Trent Woodhouse is coming, and he has a lot of weapons to choose from. Of course, he had two touchdowns through the air, Gavin Buchanan and Robert Jalima being his favorite targets. And 6'4 Buchanan was actually his target for the pass in overtime that was broken up and then Kyler Rutz was there to pick up the pieces. So it shows everybody contributes. And another one is Carter Poland. I love this story. So Carter Poland, him and Trent Woodhouse were battling for the quarterback spot last year. Trent won the job and went down in the first quarter of the Chiawana game last year. So Carter stepping in and played the entire season as QB1 and Woodhouse coming back wins the spot and Poland is like, great, where do you need me? And he does everything. He was kicking. He scored eight points in that Chiawana game. He had a touchdown. The touchdown that was scored with 111 left to play. Yeah, that was Woodhouse to Carter Poland. So kind of a special moment. And then Poland kicking and had some great pass breakups in the secondary. So Poland is everywhere. And we heard that from Biglin saying that he's really the Swiss Army knife, the Peyton Graham, if you will. And I think that's something we're talking about Swiss Army knives. In order to play that spot at Kamaikin, you have to be a good baseball player. Peyton Graham, a baseball player for the Bulldogs over at Gonzaga and Carter Poland, also a great baseball player as well. So I love that story. And not just through the air, but through the run game, the name all to hear, you know it well if you pay attention to Kamaikin sports. 
Tuna Altahir, the league MVP a couple years back. Now Tuna is over at Eastern Washington playing on the Inferno. But his cousin, Makram Altahir, he had 115 yards and a touchdown in that game. And he is going to be a staple for this Kamayakin offense. He is a bowling ball, like Big Lynn referred to him as. And what a great game he has and what a great outlook he has as well. Had a chance to catch up with him after the win. Let's listen in. Feeling amazing right now. Just beat them. I was not going to lose them again. It, was, it just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, tell me what was being said as you guys in an overtime situation last year, but different outcome this time. We just had to make our team lock in for this one because, once again, we weren't going to lose to them at all. And talk about your game tonight. You are taking on a lot more roles, getting a lot more carries. So uh, just talk about your progression, and now you're a big part of this Kamayakin offense. Um, I just had to go hard. You know, um, my family, we don't play about football, you know, so I just had to stomp my feet down on the ground, uh, ground and run. And what do you think was the difference in tonight's game? Um, our team, we were ready for this game. Last year, I don't know, but this year, we knew we were going to beat them. And uh, how does it feel to hold the all to here name? It's well known in the run game at Kamayakin. Right here's all heart, man. It feels amazing. He's going to give Tuna a ride for his money, man. <laughs> feels amazing. by Makram here, and I love that Biglin stepped in. After that, I'm like, did you hear the question that I asked him? And Biglin's like, no, what did you say? And so it was a little bit uh, serendipitous that um, Biglin came in and said that. So Makram here, get to know the name. He is here and part of the dynamic Kamayakin offense that they are hoping to grow, which leads us to our third takeaway. Let's give the defense some love. They deserve it. Brave secondary, second to none. So uh, we already talked about Poland, but David Cuckoo, he is coming on the scene. There was a lot of talks about the drop off that might be there with Gabe to hear the defensive specialist going and playing at Boise State. Gabe to hear was a big part of the Kamayakin defense and uh, one part where you didn't really see him too much is because teams, they didn't throw towards him. And you're seeing the same thing with David Cuckoo. And he's potentially another Division I player. Last month, he had his first Division I offer from Nebraska. And he had some great plays in that game, including a tip in overtime. So David Cuckoo and a number of other players are there swarming. It really shows the athleticism in the Brave secondary, as well as the communication, where that is something. It doesn't matter how athletic you are. If you don't have good communication, you're not going to go far. So it really makes them a tough team to pass against. That is why I am excited to see it. this week's matchup for Kmayakins. It's an out-of-conference matchup with Moses Lake coming to town. And that game is tonight, Thursday night football. And of course, last week we covered why there is Thursday night football, why there is Saturday football. And it is because of the referees. So if you want to hear more about that, go ahead and check out last week's show where we catch up with Jeff Kinney about the officiating and how we have a shortage of officials. Plus, if you want to hear additional takeaways or more in depth on the three takeaways for Kmyak, and it is all in an article for SB Live, and you can check that out on social media. So more coverage, last week's show talking to officials, or more coverage on takeaways from the Kmyak and Chiawana game, including a look at Chiawana because they're, they're pretty good this year as well. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. When we come back, talk about the matchup with Moses Lake 
And thank you to our sponsors for making the show possible. Welcome back to the Sports Council. A thrilling win in week one for Kamiakin. And tonight, taking on Moses Lake, the Chiefs coming into town. And this will be an exciting one because Moses Lake, their offense went off last week. They won 58-3 to over Efreda. And Brady J, he's just a sophomore. He's the quarterback for the Chiefs, and he passed for 263 yards in their 58-3 win over Freda. And he had six touchdowns in that game. And his favorite target was Joel Middleton, a 5'9 senior. So seeing that they are a pass-heavy offense, that was what was winning in their matchup last week. We'll see how that matches up against the Kamiakin secondary and pressure from the line. That was that's something that we knew Kamiakin would be good at is their line. And I don't want that to be overlooked. They deserve a shout out. So lots of pressure and it will be a fun offense versus defense matchup and Moses Lake also had some great showing on special teams two touchdowns coming from special teams and it tied to this Tri-Cities Brett J is the head coach for Moses Lake and he was the head coach at Riverview a few years back so Brett J head coach at Moses Lake and last name sound familiar his son Brady J is the quarterback and that's kind of a fun tie in this game is both coaches, Brett J and Scott Biglin, have sons on the team. And of course, Biglin, a former quarterback himself, said, I love that my son is on the line. That way we don't bud heads and we can get along. So <laughs> Landon Biglin on the line for Kamayak and head coach Scott Biglin and Brady J, quarterback for Moses Lake and his dad, Brett J, head coach for the Chiefs. So that game is tonight at seven o'clock. So we'll see how the turnout is for Thursday night. One thing I was surprised about, one thing I was surprised at last week, so great turnout to the Kamayak and Chiawana game. To be expected, Friday Night Lights, two great teams, 4A schools, and then on Saturday, I went to the Southridge Richland game. That game was at five o'clock. There was a great turnout. Last week, we talked about it's sometimes hard for schools to have a non Friday night game because you lose gate sales, people going through that the ticket sales, you see a significant drop. And I didn't see that at the Southridge Richland game. Fans came out. They supported high school sports. I loved it. So we'll see if the same is true for a Thursday night game. 7 p.m. kickoff at Lamson Stadium. It is Kamiakin and Moses Lake. So what does this game mean tonight? So this is the interesting thing. You you don't want to move ahead, but you know what? I'm not a coach, so I can do that. So taking a look ahead, this could be teeing up a big week for matchup. Kennewick getting the big win over Pasco last week. Ambrose Driver, QB1. We'll preview them in the coming weeks. But it is not to put the eggs in the basket, but it is might lead to a big week four matchup for the MCC where Kennewick and Kamiakin might both be undefeated. Kamiakin having Moses Lake tonight, Southridge next week, and Kennewick getting the win over Pasco last week. And this week, the Lions have Walla Walla, and next week, they have Sunnyside. So that is something to look forward to. And it's MCC football. We don't always cover high school here on this show, but glad to have a chance to cover them. Thank you to all the coaches for your time, players, and of course, athletic directors that 
make it easy for me to to get in and, and cover these programs. Well, that will do it for this week's show of the Sports Council. Let me know what you think. What do you want to hear about? What stories do you know of? Reach out to me on social media at Jamie Council TV. And there's multiple ways to listen to this show. You might be listening live on 1340 ESPN, your Tri-Cities leader in sports, via podcast or even listening slash watching via YouTube. So three different ways to consume the show. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to Stevens Media Group and Will Bradley. And thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Sports Council. Until next time. I'm Jamie Council.